Okay, we are going to do an Adobe Photoshop project. We're just going to call it painting from black and white into color. This is something that I've had my students do for a number of years, and they've always preferred that to what Adobe Photoshop offers, which is called Classroom in a Book. So, getting started. We're going to start off in Photoshop by turning this into a black and white image. So we're going to go image instead of mode grayscale, which would seem common sense. We're going to go adjust hue saturation, which gives us the option of sliding saturation all the way over. But instead, we're going to bring it all the way back to a black and white picture, which keeps us in the color mode. Now, starting at this point, we're going to make some layers. And layers we can go by going to layer, new, layer. We'll paint the first one is called skin. We'll make another one. We can go layer, new, layer, shortcut coming next. We'll make this eyes. The next one will be shift command N. And we'll make this hair. We'll do one called cheeks. One called jacket. One called collar. Cancel that, hit the wrong thing. Collar. And here we hopefully go. I lost two things, window layers. I want them showing, so I'm going to bring up my layers. And I also want my history showing. History is every time I click a mouse. There it is. So, starting off, now that we're in black and white, and I'm going to go on to the skin layer first. I'm going to choose from my toolbox, which is missing, so we know how to do it. We're going to go Windows Tools, and we're going to um, open the toolbox, choose from that. We have three lassos to choose from. We'll go to the hardest one to, to use, but I like it the most, the lasso. So for the moment, we're just going to rush gently around the head and just find just the idea of the skin. This is going to be a very loose, quick operation for you, so you don't spend forever just learning what you want to be able to do on your own. And again, just kind of ruggedly going. Once I've connected on the skin layer, I'm going to go Select, Save Selection. I'm going to call this Skin. Actually, I'll call it Face for now. And once I've done that on the face layer, um, I guess I didn't have a face layer. I had a skin, but we'll use that. Actually, make a new one called Face. So layer new face, because we have other skin in this also. And we're going to find something of a tan color that we're going to try to use that might be in the skin tone area of a, of a brown. My daughter's in a light brown area. So we have a choice between paintbrushes and bucket. We're going to use the bucket, but before we dump, if we dump it in, this is what would happen. So we're going to take that layer and take it down in the low range so it just barely has some color to it. Then we're going to go select, deselect. We're going to go into maybe the circular key called the elliptical marquee tool. And we're going to try to make a little circle around the cheek area. We're going to go on the cheeks layer, put that down around the 30% range someplace. And maybe we'll find something of a rouge color. So of the rouge color, we will again either use, we'll use the brush this time and just kind of make a gentle 30% area. Select D, select, or Command D gets rid of that. It's a little too harsh on the edge. So maybe going back into the paintbrush area, looks like I have to show my brushes as being bigger than this one. Take it up a little bit and just soften the edge a hair in there. And then maybe also draw a small one on this cheek a little bit. Grab the eraser and erase the extra. We're now going to go into maybe the jacket area using, we have again the magnetic lasso. That's a little tougher to use. It sort of follows, if it can find contrast, it'll follow. Sometimes it works really well. You might have to click every so often and have it follow you. Um, sometimes people like that. I don't like it as much because it's if there's not a lot of contrast, it's going to have trouble following. But we'll find a way to make it work here for this one. So up, down, I've got to get around the collar. 
Okay, so we have the makings of it. Pretty good, actually. I'm going to go into my regular lasso and click on the shift key, which gives me a plus. And on the plus, I'm going to add a little bit more of this jacket to it. Um, over here, I'm going to add some more jacket to this. So that pretty much includes it. Any place to take it away? Let's see, maybe right here, I will add a little bit more jacket to that. I don't want too much, so I'm going to go to the Option key and maybe subtract some. And I think that's close enough for now to paint it. So let's find maybe a greenish color, just to have some contrast, a light tone green. We'll go into the jacket. Um, to make this quick, we'll take a bucket, dump it in, take this opacity down into the 30-20% range. The darker it is, the more you lose of the contrast in the folds of the clothing. So for now, we'll go Command D to get rid of uh, all of the selection lines. One thing I think I wanted to show you, while the selection lines are still there, we're going to go to Select, Save Selection. We'll call this Jacket. If somehow you got a phone call or your computer timed out or you wanted to work on this tomorrow, if you were to have to want to start again at, at that point, you would just go select load selection, go to the one that says jacket, and it's ready to work on again. But at this point, I'm going to start another selection, this time on the collar area. So I think I'll just kind of run around here. Um, actually, that's not collar. We'll go just for the collar, carefully around the cheeks, grab the shift key get a little bit more of the collar and maybe we'll make this just something of a yellowish tone if we can find one and we just take a paintbrush in there that's big enough maybe a little bigger brush dive it on in are we on the jacket nope i wanted to be on the collar one and up here so again in case i don't like the opacity if the same as the jacket if i want it a little darker or lighter each layer allows you to choose your own capacity. Now we're going to go into the hair area. Of course, I hadn't colored the fingers, but we'll skip that for now. And on the hair, I'm going to run on around here a little bit tougher area. And whoops, hold the shift key and keep on going. And when you get in a funny place like this, you just kind of give it a little bit of run around for a, an evenish ending. So within that area we might call select low save the selection is here. Take some color, uh, maybe I will use something of a blonde-ish color and taking a paintbrush on the hair area, take it down 30%. Um, make sure that we do have a brush that is the wet edged brush and maybe not too large in this case. We might try and follow up and just find some of the highlights within their hair and come through with some of those. It won't look right at this point. So this is an area where I'm just gonna take a shortcut with you and just kinda of cut through the ideas. Maybe we're gonna have another layer called hair two. So a new layer, hair two. Maybe choose something of a light brown color if I can come up with one and again way too high of a transparency and then maybe just add some other colors it's going to get a little bit almost though she left the hairdresser today but oh well I won't show her this uh, and hopefully we'll keep it secret between us and at any rate I can get maybe a little bit of some dark browns in there as well so I probably should use a third layer for that, just for the sake of showing you proper. So hair three, and maybe just a little bit more of some just gentler tones, just kind of even out the ideas. So again, whatever you want to do with the hair, whether it's purple or green or whatever it is that you're trying to work from, this will at least kind of even it out a bit for you. So. Select, deselect. For now, we're done with some hair. Doesn't look real at all, but life goes on. So you'd have to 
go up larger with your magnifying glass and work pretty intricate to get it closer, but that's okay for now. We're going to, for the moment, maybe just blow up with a lasso this area on her shirt. We have the magic wand. We could click, we have to go back to the bottom of our layers, if I can find it here, the background layer. I'm going to unlock it for the moment so that I can work on there. I'm going to click on this white. And again, there is up in here a tolerance of 25. Tells it how much of that white should it be susceptible to throughout the area. But for now, I'm going to take a gamble on getting a little bit more of this white in. Whoops, too far. And maybe I would go select, save a selection. I think I missed it. We'll just call it color design. And we'll take a color, maybe red. And under the reddish colors, maybe just take a brush and take again our saturation. We'll make a new layer for color design. I went to the background so that it would see the design, whereas it wouldn't see it on a layer that we haven't used yet. And misspelled, let it go. And we'll just go ahead and paint that a little bit. Take the opacity way down there, select, deselect, and we can back up and see how we're looking. I think I would like to add, a, we'll forget our hand for now, some water. We're in the Puget Sound area, so we'll just go through and add a little bit of the Puget Sound in here. Hold the Shift key while I come around the face. It's going to be a little bit more critical here, so I'll... Slow down just a drop. Running out of mouse space on my keyboard, but anyway. Um, one last area down in here. So I'm going to try to work around the fingers. And the magic wand might have been able to find that. Magic wand is used to find one color that stays fairly specific throughout. Your, your unit. So do I have one for water? I think not. So we'll make one for water. And take something of a light blue. Dump it in there. Under my water. And take that opacity way on down. Select, deselect. And at least that's the idea. I don't really like the rouge colors on the cheek. So for the moment, I'm going to go to cheeks. See if I can take the eyedropper tool and sample the color. It comes up with a color here. You can sample most colors and match it. But I'll try and match this one. Go back into my paintbrush. And maybe just a little bigger paintbrush. Um, I'm going to try to get a little bigger area of that cheek done and maybe a tiny drop more opacity on it. Oh, the lips we haven't done yet. So let's move for a moment into the lips just as easily. Take the lasso tool. And again, you may like one of the other lasso tools. We'll go into one of those on another project soon. This is, I think, at least, whoops, I forgot to hold the shift key. It's good to make mistakes because I've never learned anything about photography or Photoshop without making the mistakes first and then learning, if I can, from them eventually. So now we've got a couple of lips. Um, it is what it is here. And I think I'll take the brush, take my rouge color again, put them in there, and that was on the cheeks, but I think it'd be about the same. Command D. I think that's a little bit too light. So... Um, to make a goof, I'm going to just erase a little bit of that color. And I think that'll have to be about it for the day. So let's take a look from the distance. So we've got several layers worked out. Collar jacket, cheeks, hair, hair too, another hair, um, eyes, face, skin, water, collar design, and we've certainly got some white areas left, so don't be hesitant to take your eyedropper, depending on which one you want to put it on. We'll take the blue color, 
take a brush, maybe a really small brush, so it's going to be up to you to go back and kind of improve. I think I'll make a new layer just to, to fix that. I'll just call Fix Water and paint it on in so you can make up for some of your own little errors later on just by being a little more careful, which I don't think for the time being that's terribly important for this lesson, but at least you got the idea here. So there is one just general idea of getting it started. I think that um, we avoided the eyes. I'll try one last look just to show you. She does not have blue eyes. She has brown eyes, which they already are. Had we wanted to, we could have erased the color of the eyes. It was kind of brown colored and could have just deleted the color there and then gone into whichever color you chose. I'm going to choose a little darker brown for her if I can. And kind of paint that on in my eyes layer and give it a bit of a color there and take it way down. And maybe a little bit in here as well. And that will be a little bit more up here and I think we'll call it. So for the moment that's going to be lesson one on I don't like the hair. Nonetheless you got the creative side of it. It would have much easier to have just shown you a brown but most people really like to play with hair. So enjoy! <laughs>